Hi guys. How are you all today morning? Good morning. Today is 26th December 2023. My name is T S V Rakhavan and I live in Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. This is my spiritual vlog on YouTube. Har Dan H A R D A N Har Dan Hari Bol T R S V Nectar N E C T A R Nectar In this particular vlog in all my previous videos we have been trying to discuss and analyze about topics of which we learned or gleaned from the study of spiritual books scriptures contemplation on the material universe and meditation on the spiritual universe this particular video in this vlog is no exception to that rule in fact it is a mere continuation of all that we have been doing in all my previous videos kindly subscribe to this vlog and press the bell icon so that i may keep reminding you of all my previous present and future videos so let us continue with the topic of discussion for today's video in the past videos we have been trying to discuss understand and analyze in detail a particular term that plays a perennial role in the psyche and the life of every human living entity whether male or female this particular term is known as mind by now we know that mind is not visible to the naked eye of the gross body of any human living entity whether male or female in this lifetime in this society mind is a subtle force that is very much present in the four layers of material body of every human living entity the gross form of mind is that mass of tissue called brain which is safely embedded in the cranium of the gross body of every human living entity whether male or female it must be acknowledged that this particular brain is present in every other non human living entity especially the worms insects trees sorry animals bees amphibians reptiles birds etc 
but in a varying degree. It may also be present in full grown trees or plants, but one is not aware of this. The only thing we remember is that the brain of these living entities is not as developed as that of a human living entity. Moreover, the human psyche is the only species which has what is known as instinct or sixth sense as far as we know. It is a capacity to understand some subtle vibration in the society which probably other living entities cannot do. Anyway, this mind is the link between the three layers of subtle body and the fourth layer of gross body of every living entity, whether male or female. This subtle mind is the repository of all vibrations that emanate out of the three layers of subtle body of a living entity. These three layers are known as the causal body of intelligence and logic, the astral body of mind, feelings and emotions, and the etheric body of five senses namely sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. When these vibrations emanate out of these three subtle bodies and they get deposited in the subtle mind, this mind further after some Process processing transmits some of these vibrations to the brain of the gross body of that living entity. When these messages are sent to the brain, this brain selects further some of those vibrations that reach the brain according to the karma, destiny, age, taste, preferences, experience, maturity, education, cerebral faculties, whims, fantasies, surroundings, birth, atmosphere, peer pressure and so on. And then, after selecting a few vibrations, it processes these vibrations and extracts a particular use of these vibrations that have been selected and percolates that use through the gross body of that particular living entity. The gross body of that particular living entity acts according to the juice thus percolated down its rest of the gross body. This is a continuous perpetual process that begins nine months before a living entity is born and ends the day the same living entity takes his or her last breath in this lifetime in this material world. In other words, during the complete course of life, 
of every human living entity, this mind keeps vibrating or transmitting the redeposited vibrations from the three subtle bodies to the brain which processes a select few and percolates the juice thus extracted from the transmitted and selected vibrations down the gross body of the same living entity. Here we must acknowledge the fact that an individual mind and the brain exist in every individual human living entity. There is not one collective mind which vibrates through the messages that are transmitted to the brain of a living entity. Every human living entity is individual and independent and everyone's mind works according to his or her destiny or karma. Here I would like to add that this is precisely the reason why the brains or minds of different living entities, whether they are infants, newborn babies, children, adolescents, teenagers, adults, middle-aged men, old-aged men or dying men react because the maturity level or the evolvement level of the choice of their individual brains towards those vibrations change according to the age of that particular living entity. Further, every living entity's education, cerebral evolvement, intelligence, experience, maturity, peer pressure, surroundings, atmosphere, birth family, etc. also play a big role in the selection of such vibrations. That is precisely the reason why we have so many different categories of human living entities in the society existing during a particular lifetime. There are daily wages, unskilled laborers, artisans, talented artisans, carpenters, blacksmiths, goldsmiths, teachers, lecturers, professors, writers, intellectuals, scientists, discoverers, sages, monks, rishis, maharishis, godmen, evangelist speakers, boxers, athletes, sportsmen, musicians, etc. Every one of us coexists in the society during a lifetime in this material world. Yes, the individual living entity differs from one person to another whether or not he or she is a male or a female. This is all because of the difference in the choice of vibrations from each of us brain and how that brain selects some vibrations transmitted to it by that mind and makes us react according to the juice so selected 
from the vibrations that have been transmitted. Here broadly in this society there are three major categories. These three major categories belong to all human living entities collectively. 75% of this humanity at any given lifetime in this society belongs to the ordinary vegetative mundane category of human living entities. These are those which have not cerebrally or otherwise yet evolved spiritually or materialistic as a result of which they walk around in the society like zombies who have come here only to vegetate in this lifetime. These people are ordinary human beings who probably don't even realize that they have a purpose in life and they must focus their attention towards that purpose in life. These are people of whom we need not discuss for the time being only because we are not going to learn anything from such living entities, whether they are male or female. Now remain the rest of the 100%, that is 25%. 75% have already been declared mundane. Of the rest, 25%, 20% of select human beings gravitate towards and worship the dark negative forces that exist and vibrate in this society in the material world. As they have been existing right from the beginning of life in this material world, so they are becoming more and more dark and complicated. This 20% of living entities love to be in that atmosphere and feel sincerely that they can progress and succeed while living in that 20% of negative forces. Whether or not they are right, their own destiny and karma will tell. Now remains the other 5%. These 5% of living entities in this society are quite considerable in a number as such, though they are not as big as the mundane 75% or the negative 20%. This 25, this 5% are considered to be the chosen ones because they have been fortunate enough according to their own destiny, karma, thoughts, views, ideas and opinions to choose this 5% of the top of the society. It is quite possible that even the 20% or the 5% once belonged to their own 75% category 
in one lifetime of their own. Yet, because of their thoughts, they chose to gravitate towards the negative or the positive forces. Yes, circumstances also decide on which side one living entity has to gravitate. There is one Tamil song in which it is mentioned that every infant is totally innocent and equal to one another. Yet, circumstances and upbringing decide on whether that particular infant or baby will remain mundane, gravitate towards the negative forces, or choose the 5% category. However, here I would hasten to add that even the choice of remaining mundane, negative or positive is dependent on the prarabdha karma of that particular infant or baby or that living entity, whether male or female. It is their past karma and destiny which has been chosen as a slice for a present lifetime that decides on the ultimate future of that living entity in a particular birth. We may in the outset think that it is the circumstances may that decided on the destiny of that living entity. But the fact remains that even those circumstances were created nine months before that particular living entity, whether male or female, was even born. This is because the slice of Sanchit karma called Prarabdha karma that is going to become the foundation for the next birth was chosen even before that living entity was even born. It is only because of that that this living entity chooses his or her womb, family, surroundings, background, etc. to be born in. And thus he or she lays a foundation for his or her next birth and lifetime in a particular birth in this endless cycle of birth and death of every living entity. Gautam Buddha has openly stated that he has still active memories of his previous births as anaconda, bees, elephants, thieves, robbers, etc. while he was ultimately hailed as Gautam Buddha. That shows that Gautama the Buddha's thoughts and ideas even during his past births and the surroundings of those past births were so holy and noble that ultimately his own prarabdha karma guided him to be born in the 5% category. This happens to every human living entity, whether male or female. 
we have been trying to discuss several case histories to vouch for this particular theory or idea of mind. In that process, we are talking about case histories from the dark forces which are negative in nature. In my yesterday's video, we began talking about the mind of some of those who were born in this dark 20% category. We talked about Harman Goering, the right hand man of Adolf Hitler, the dictator of Germany, who was the main architect of the Second World War. We also began talking about Hitler and we learned about how he was born in the household of one Aloy Shukilguber, who was the son or illegitimate son of a wealthy Jewish father and his own German maid servant. Aloy's mother was German and father was that wealthy Jewish person. Adolf Hitler was born as this alive son and the moment he came to know about his true credentials as a living entity in that particular birth, he began having a deep-seated hatred for the Jewish community only because he sincerely believed that his illegitimate wealthy Jewish father gave his surname to his illegitimate son, Aloy, that is Aloy's father, but he refused to make him a part of his own household. This Hitler considered to be a gross injustice. Further, he moved away from this father and gravitated towards his own German mother. Aloy, the half Jewish, half German, had married one complete German woman. The surname of that woman was Heidler. Adolf Hitler hated his own past in this lifetime to such an extent that he dared to change his surname from Schickelguber, in which he was born, to his own mother's maiden name, Hitler. Hitler later became Hitler. So Adolf Schickelguber became Adolf Hitler in later days. His seeds of hatred were born were sown at the time when he was born in that family of his against Jews. But this hatred was further aggravated when he found that the Jews were academically and cerebrally superior to him in Austria and Vienna and he felt that this was also a gross injustice in the society where he felt that thanks to a conspiracy against the Germans, the Jews were preferred to succeed in this society. This was further aggravated when he became a painter of windows of various wealthy households and when he peeped through the windows, he found that most of those 
wealthy affluent households belonged to Jews. This hatred of Hitler was shared by equally disillusioned and disgruntled youth of Austria, Austria at that time. It is in this team of disgruntled youth that Hitler became part of and began earning his living as a household painter and window cleaner. We shall continue this topic in my next video. This is all I wish to talk about in this particular video. Kindly let me know what you think of my talk on this particular subject. Please give me your own expert views, thoughts, ideas and opinions so that I may blend everything together for the sake of this society. Before concluding, let me remind you that I am also a published author with Amazon Kindle and paperback. I write on spiritualism, fiction and assorted subjects. Spiritualism happens to be my favorite subject. Till we meet in my next video, it is good morning from TSV Raghavan.